Good morning, class. Um, I want to apologize that I'm not at school. Uh, my family is really suffering with s just a virus that's going around. Um, so please pray for our household. Uh, Roman had to be in the hospital um, overnight last night. Um, and then my wife was uh, vomiting all, all day today. So um, I really need to take care of my, my family. But I wanted to give you guys some clarity on the notes um, to hopefully clear things up. Um, so you guys should have taken some notes on four different types of love, which are called storage, philia, um, eros, and agape. Um, the reason these are all really important um, is because I think all of you guys would agree with me that the way you love your mom is not the same way that you love pizza. Or the way that you love um, your car is not the same way that you love your boyfriend or girlfriend, right? These are, they're very clearly different ways in which we love. And the English language um, does a really poor job explaining that, right? But in Greek, um, there are words for, for almost all of these things. Um, so it's really, really interesting to study the Greek um, words used for love. So I'm going to go through them and clarify some things um, that might have been a little confusing as you were taking the notes. So the first is storage, S-T-O-R-G-E, storage. Um, this is that the most kind of basic understanding of, of love or affection. Um, affection is usually the best way I like to explain it. Um, affection is something that can be given or or, or empathy is something that be, can be given, but it doesn't necessarily require an attachment, right? It, it, you don't have to, you don't have to have a personal connection with something or someone to love, love that something or someone, right? Uh, storage communicates this well, the way a child loves their parents, um, right? If you ask a, a my son and a, a couple months when he's able to talk, do you love mommy and daddy? He'll say yes, but does he know why? Probably not. This is storage, right? Um, a baseline kind of love that a family has for one another. Um, also understood as empathy or tolerance. Storage is that love that when, when Christ calls us to love our enemies, um, usually it's with storage. Not really, we don't really want to, um, but we do because we know we're called to, um, and storage is kind of like loving pizza or sports teams or cars, right? An affection for something, but not necessarily a very intimate kind of love. The next kind of love, excuse me, is philia. Um, if you will notice, Philadelphia um, shares the same root as the word philia. Um, Philadelphia is the city of brotherly love. Philia is described as a brotherly love. Um this is dispassionate. It's not romantic or erotic. Um, and it is a very virtuous love. This, this type of love philia, um, is highly regarded as the love that friends have for one another. Um, so me and Mr. O'Brien, we share a philia kind of love for one another, right? That brotherly love. The next is Eros. Um, this is what I think the secular world most identifies love as. Um, eros is passionate love. Eros seems the same root, sh excuse me, shares the same root as um, erot erotic or eroticism. Um, so eros is passionate love. Um, and its most modern word, erotos, uh, means intimate love. So eros is where we find um, our romantic attraction to, to someone, um, that romantic kind of love. Um, Eros is that honeymoon stage in relationships. Um, when we're really infatuated with our boyfriend or girlfriend or, um, fiance or, or newly wed wife or husband, um, Eros is that kind of passion behind that love. Eros is where we find physical attraction. Um, but through contemplation, through, through a deeper understanding of Eros, through a deeper understanding of that passion, it can be more than just um, 
a misunderstanding of objectifying beauty, but come to truly understand the beauty of a person or beauty itself. So Eros is a very passionate and romantic kind of love. And then lastly is agape. Um, Agape is the love that God has for man and hopefully that man has for God. Agape is um, that sacrificial, excuse me, sacrificial love um, that we all really strive to have, that Christ calls us to have. Um, Thomas Aquinas puts it beautifully. Agape is, quote, to will the good of another, end quote. Um, Simply, agape um, is loving someone so that they get, um, or, or they get the best, um, for them. You desire the best for that person, um, not because you want anything, but because uh, you desire that for them, for their sake. Um, and even if this comes at a sacrifice to yourself, agape is a sacrificial love and a Christ-like love. Um, agape, hopefully, is the kind of love that a parent has for their child, right? You would hope that a parent would be willing to do anything for their children. Um, similarly, Uh, We hope that agape is the kind of love that spouses have for one another. Um, We desire to sacrifice and to give of ourselves to our spouses. Agape allows us um, to access that kind of sacrificial, self-giving love. So I just wanted to clarify some of those things in case it was was a little bit unclear. Um, It's really important that we understand the difference between these uh, because according to the English language, Love can get really muddied and confused, but when we look at the Greek, we have a great opportunity to understand the different kind of love, right? So, um, yeah, uh, you should have an assignment attached to this post on Classroom. Um, Please take care of that during class today. Um, Hopefully, I will see you Friday. Uh, Hopefully, our family gets better. Continue to please pray for us. Um, And I do miss you guys because I've gotten... Very little amount of sleep, and my family is all very demanding of my time. So hopefully I will see you soon. God bless.